Hey everybody, it's Greg Reinhardt from GRB Academy bringing you episode number 11 in our recruiting uh, video series. Today I'm talking about early offers and primarily offers to um, what you may see as 8th graders, 9th graders, uh, and, and people who are sophomores. Talking a little bit about um, what those decisions are made on, mainly. I know it's a big question is how can schools go out and commit a kid? He doesn't do this good. He doesn't do that good. Or he's, yeah, he's a good player, but he's, you know, this or that. So I thought I would just shed what I think are five things that um, colleges make those decisions on. So one, I think colleges recruit skills that are college ready. So if you have a, an eighth grader, ninth grader, sophomore, um, and he is already at a college runner speed. He's super fast. Um, if he is physically really big, like let's say a kid is physically advanced, is still a projectable body, um, I think that's one of the things they look at. If In terms of a pitcher, if the breaking ball is really, really good early and it's got really good spin, Generally, that's the thing that they look at and say, well, the velocity will come later because the arm path is clean and the breaking ball is super tight. Um, those are things that colleges don't need to guess on because they're already ready. So if a player is really good and shows some of these traits that maybe are, are ready for the college level then, they make some of those decisions. That's the first line of items I think they look at. The second line, um, tools that don't leave. Baseball IQ, super important. You can tell a kid who's super advanced and understanding the game, he plays it um, a lot differently than everyone else at his age. Um, that's a big one. Maturity, how they handle themselves on the field and off the field. I think it's a big one is colleges, you know, they love seeing a kid who's super mature on the field. He has the IQ, that's great. They get him off the phone, they get him on a phone call or you get talking to them and they realize that this kid is, is mature beyond his age, um, has a great understanding of, of how to be a, a good person, and then he has a really strong work ethic. I think those things combined kind of make you know, that IQ, maturity, work ethic package something that never goes away for the most part. Um, that's a key piece to college just moving early on a player. Um, the third thing I would say is they watch a lot of in-game production. Um, if they see a guy play quite a few times and they just realize that every time he plays um, he's at a super high level, super consistent and very advanced against his peers, I think that makes colleges feel very comfortable in knowing that okay he's got some tools that play at our level, um, he's mature and every time I've seen him he's been really good and it doesn't look like he's playing against his age level, it looks like he's playing down. Um, or if you got a kid who's playing up by a year or two and he still stands out, like in-game matters a lot. Um, fourth thing I would say is projection. You just look at a guy and you're like, okay, he's super thin. We can add 25 pounds here. Mom and dad are taller. He probably got three more inches, four more inches to grow. Um, he might have a really square shoulder frame as he's a pitcher or be tall and thin with a with a really loose action that, that really plays on the mound down the road. And as you add weight, you can definitely see that there's, you know, there's fast twitch and it's gonna throw harder or he's gonna be a, you know, he swings really well and the bat path is really good and there's a lot more juice there in the bat once he physically matures. So there's gotta be some level of projection. Um, and then the last thing I think is, is interesting and I talked about this with uh, skills that are college ready is a lot of guys with pitchers will look at the spin. He's got a super tight fastball spin or super tight breaking ball spin. I've heard all sorts of methods. I've heard the add 14, add 16 miles per hour to his breaking ball if it's super tight. And that's what his top side maybe is when he matures. I've heard a lot of goofy things, but um, ultimately like plus spin generally matters um, and usually is a sign of more things to come down the road. So. Early recruiting is not for everyone. I think a lot of people like the thoughts and ideas. I always tell people once the recruiting's over, um, your time in the spotlight and, and all the attention kind of goes away. 
Um, but there are some cases where guys commit early and, and people always ask, well, how does that happen? And that's kind of, kind of, I think what colleges are looking for is a player that sticks out like a sore thumb. His skill sets are super good. There's some measurables, there's some IQ and maturity. Um, and I think the maturity in the, the family is a big deal because if he comes from a great family and he's super mature, you can count on that player, um, to put in the work that it's going to take to get up to the level that they want when that player gets there. So I think those are, at least the maturity and work ethic and family are, are really a big thing in all this too. You don't see many colleges rolling out the dice on someone who they're not quite sure about as a person. So all the skill sets combined and you mix that piece in, um, you can start to see colleges um, get out on guys a little bit earlier. So. I still think there's a lot of ways to get recruited. If you're not an early recruit, it certainly is not a death sentence. Um, there are odds and numbers that say that all the early recruits don't necessarily make it. So there's a lot of ways to go with the process all the way through being a JUCO player. But um, certainly it's a part of our world. We see people doing it, and there's been a lot of questions on it. I think every college coach will say they don't like the early recruiting. Um, I think they're all forced into it because everyone is doing it. And it's probably fair because they're rolling the dice to some extent on projection and some other things. And I think everyone in the world would love to just recruit kids who are 17, 18, or 19 years old and physically a lot closer. But that's not the world we're living in right now until the NCAA changes something. I think it'll be here for a long time. So that's uh, you know really five, five key elements that I think go into um, – into a player being recruited early. So that's episode 11. I hope you enjoyed. Please take a minute to subscribe if you are not subscribed, and we will see you soon. Bye.